All right, so here's a very important optimization if you want to feel superior to people on the internet. Or, I mean, at least if you want to write your scripts very efficiently and optimize and stuff like that. This came up in a video a little bit ago, and I realized I didn't have enough time to explain it just in case you don't know it, so here's a video on it. So, I did something, we were doing something like this, okay? And, oh, actually, this is the lesson of this video. Never use a complicated tool when a simpler tool exists. Never rely on complex technology when simple technology exists. That's a recurring theme on this channel. But, so, let's say we have a variable in our shell. Uh, we have, and all it has is two, it, well, it's one string, it has two words in it, apple and orange. What if I want to do something with that information? I wanna, you know, print out just apple or print out just orange, okay? I use these weird commands in a video previously to do stuff like that in a script. And I said that that was more efficient than alternatives. Now, first off, well, I'm going to explain how these work because they look like totally vexing. But uh, first, what do people usually do when they have this issue? Let's say that you have, let's do it ourselves. Um, let's say we do have this variable, apple orange. So, of course, you can print a variable out. Um, now, right off the bat, a lot of times people will use something like awk. Let's say we only want, so we have this variable that has apple orange in it. We only want to print out apple. A lot of people will do this. They will say, okay, I'm gonna, I saw someone do this, so I'm gonna imitate it. And it does work, I'm not knocking it. I've done it before, I do it. Um, but um, let's say you pipe it into awk, and awk has this option where you can say, okay, only print the first column. So you run that, and it only has apple. Or you change this to two, and it says, okay, I'm only printing orange. That's how that works. So this is how people often do it. And of course, I just ran it here, it was nice and quick. Um, but this is actually really inefficient, okay? And what I mean by that is every time you run this, you're calling awk. Now, first off, let's, let's, bur we gotta bust out time. Um, if we time this, you see that, it, you know, here's the time it takes. Now, of course, that's very quick. That's way faster than, than uh, humans are gonna notice. But I was writing a script last week where I was looping through something and I had to do exactly this, all, this modification. And because I was looping through something and running awk, calling the separate program awk over and over again, it was so laggy. Whereas let's say we just do this, okay? And let's say we time this. How quick, how quick is this command? Oh, look at that. It is like 0 0.001, okay? Actually, if we rerun it a lot of times, I've run this before, sometimes it's literally just zero. Um, this is infinite, this is 1 16th of the time. Uh, of the awk command. So if you're running this in a script, you definitely want to do, be doing the simpler alternative that's built into the shell. Actually, let's let's have a three-way comparison because a lot of people use awk. A lot of people will know that awk is actually a very complicated program. It's very big, does a lot of things. The, a simpler alternative is usually cut. So we said awk was, uh, you know, let's retime awk. Uh, where, where'd that go? Okay, so awk goes about that fast. Uh, it's a little faster this time, but still pretty slow. Let's try cut. Okay, I'm gonna say cut, use the delimiter of spaces, because we have spaces separating the columns, quote unquote, and format for me the second column. Okay, so uh, awk took around this much time. Cut was nearly half as, uh, ha half as fast, twice as fast with half of the speed. And if we use this built-in equivalent, it's way faster, all right? So we wanna, figure out what this actual built-in equivalent is, but look at it, it looks confusing. So let's explain it, okay? So I have this little script here, it's called tester. Just to validate that it works, this first command will print out apple, this second command will print out orange, and they get it from this variable. No fancy, nothing else fancy, uh, runs extra quick, okay? So let's figure this stuff out. Okay, I'm gonna actually just sort of get rid of this stuff by exiting before it. So, of course, you know that we can echo out a variable, okay? Uh, that's, everyone knows that kind of stuff. Uh, it's not run time on that, because that's gonna get annoying. So, and that'll ep echo out apple orange. Let's say, you can also do this, okay? You can also modify a string and do special stuff with it, add on special things. Here's an example. Uh, I'm gonna say pound sign, and then I'm gonna say A, okay? What does this do? If I run tester, what that has done is it deletes that first A. Now what the pound sign does is this. It says, delete, I'm gonna give you a substring, in this case our substring is A. 
I want you to delete that from the beginning of this string. So if I say A, it deletes A. If I say app, it's gonna delete app. If I say apple, it's gonna delete apple. Notice it did not delete the space here. It just deleted apple. What happens if I say orange? Okay, here's a good question. Nothing happens. It prints out the, the whole variable because pound sign is only deleting from the very beginning. If it doesn't find a match at the very beginning, it's not gonna delete. So if I say orange, or if I just say or, okay, it's not gonna delete anything. But you can also match globs. So I can put an asterisk in here, and it's gonna try and find the match of an ast, you know, the asterisk of course means, in glob matching it means any character. So it's gonna say, okay, I'm gonna start at the beginning, I'm gonna look for any characters I find, and then I'm gonna find OR, and that's when I'm gonna stop deleting, okay? So if I run this now, it is going to delete all the way to OR, or specifically, it's gonna find this whole regular expression of dollar sign, or dollar sign, um, asterisk OR, and then it's gonna delete that, okay? So it's deleted all the way to OR, or if we change this to L, what's it gonna do? It's gonna start at the beginning, it's gonna, Find the seek, it's gonna find the match of the glob and then L and it's gonna delete that all from the beginning, okay? So that's what that's doing. Now here's a trick, this is a trick question. What happens if I just have a glob, okay? What do you think? Now normally the glob can match literally anything. It can match nothing, it can match anything. So what is it gonna do? Is it gonna delete nothing or is it gonna delete anything, okay? In this case, it's gonna delete nothing. Now if you have one pound sign, what that means is I want glob match conservatively, glob match as little things as possible, as few things as possible. Whereas if I put two pound signs, as I have down here, that is gonna say, okay, when you see an asterisk, be really greedy, steal everything, get rid of everything. So if I run this now, it actually says, okay, the whole thing matches the asterisk, so I'm gonna delete it all. Now, in some cases, of course, let's say, let's say the example of asterisk P. If I run that with two pound signs, that's gonna delete both P's. Cause it's gonna say, I'm gonna be greedy. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna, I realize that this matches, um, you know, I'm gonna be really greedy. I'm gonna take as many as possible if I have two pound signs. So I'm gonna delete APP, okay? But if you have one pound sign, you're saying be as conservative as possible. In that case, it's only gonna match the other P, it's not being greedy. The, the asterisk is not greedy. So again, what pound sign does is it deletes from the beginning. If you have one pound sign, your globs are gonna be conservative. If you have two pound signs, they're gonna be greedy. That's what that means. So what do you think that the percent sign does? Well, let's try it out, okay? Let's see what this does. So let's change this to a percent, uh, oops. So we know that you know if we run A in uh, pound sign, it's gonna delete A from the beginning. What happens here? Well, nothing happens here. Well, that's because percent sign deletes from the end. So if I change this to E, you will now see that E from the very end has been deleted. So now orange is without its E. I mean, it was silent anyway, who cares? So we can also put in uh, here, we can put in inch, uh, and you see that it's now apple aura. Uh, or we can, of course, ma ma match globs as well. So we can put in and then uh, glob match, and it's like that's gonna delete in G, E, because G and E match the glob. Or let's actually try again with P, because that's a good example of the double letters. Uh, in this case, um, since we have one percent sign, just like in the case of pound signs, if you have one percent sign, it's gonna be very conservative in what it deletes. So its glob is only gonna match up into the first P, okay, and delete only that. Whereas if you have, um, if you have two percent signs, exactly equivalent to, to having two uh, pound signs, uh, it's gonna delete both P's. It's gonna, the glob is gonna be greedier, right? So that's what's going on here. Now, uh, so just as a rehearsal, rehearsal um, this is a much quicker way at looking at strings, deleting portions of them, or getting subsets of them. Um, this doesn't work the same way as awk when doing multiple lines, but if you just have simple variable, variables like this, it is much more efficient, much faster. It happens basically instantaneously. You should always do this if you have the opportunity. It is a built-in solution for your problem. So just as a reminder, pound signs delete from the very beginning. Maybe we should, I don't know, just rehearse. So pound signs delete from the beginning. If our string is apple orange, I can put in apple, and that is gonna delete. 
it's just Apple. It's not gonna delete the space here. If we wanna delete the space, we have to delete that or put it, put it in there. Uh, whereas percent signs are gonna delete from the end. So it's not gonna delete anything here because Apple space is not at the end. But if we replace it with say space orange, what's it gonna delete? It's gonna delete all of that stuff. Um, you can of course put globs in these, as I said, and if you double them, the glo globs are gonna be greedy. Now one final note, okay, let's look at the, these commands that I already have. Now I should say, let's just run these commands and you'll see that I get apple and orange. So think about it. If I'm using 2% signs here and two pound signs here, is this gonna change any if I reduce, if I only have one of them in each? In this case, it's actually not. If I run them over again, uh, it's, it's, ma it's matching space and then glob. So the reason this deletes space orange is because I say here's a space and then here's an asterisk, delete everything there. Now the difference happens, let's say we change our variable. Let's say our variable is now apple grape orange. Now if I have two, well actually we'll, we'll do um, only one glob matching right now. So let's say we have, we're being conservative in our glob matching. If I run this, it's gonna delete, this first command is gonna delete all of this because it's matching conservatively. And the second command is gonna delete with the uh, uh, you know pound sign, it's gonna delete this without the G. I didn't mean to highlight that. Whereas if we say, okay, be a little le uh, so in both cases, right, grape is in them. Whereas if we put in the extra symbols to tell it basically be greedier in their globs, it's gonna not print out grape because it's ma actually matching, just to be clear, um, you know, let's say this one here. Um, if we tell it to be conservative, it's only gonna match up to this space. But if we tell it to be more radical, it's gonna be up to this space. Okay, that's the difference. So anyway, I re-explained that a couple times, but that's how you do it. That's how you do edit substrings. And there actually even, there's even more of this stuff. This is built into the POSIX shell, or at least Dash. Um, there's even more of this kind of stuff with Bash. Maybe I should do a video on that, but. Uh, all right, so that's enough. This has been gone a little longer than I expected, but I'll see you guys next time.